I'll give further notices out at the end of the service, but I just wanted to make that clear at this point. Also, um, we've slightly amended the order of service, the liturgy, to reflect the season that we are in, the season of Epiphany. And I'm delighted to be joined in church by your two church wardens, by Sam, who's Zoom Meister, Stephen, who's disc jockey for today. And I've been joined by the Holy Family and a few of these creatures here, which we'll look at a little later on. And I'm delighted that Richard is going to read the gospel reading to us in a wee while. So welcome, in the name of Christ, God's grace, mercy, and peace be with each one of you. And yeah, also with you. And the collect for today. We're celebrating the Epiphany today, as we will do on Saturday. We can do that because it's Brindle. We can celebrate the Epiphany on two occasions. So the colic for the Epiphany, let us pray. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins, saying together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon each one of us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Richard, shout loudly from Smithy Close and read the gospel to us this morning, please. The reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The visit of the wise men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who was born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so is written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means among all the rulers of Judea. And from whom shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel? Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its, at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overjoyed with joy. He, on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Richard, that was splendid, clear as a bell. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. So we pray. Father God, just take our hearts and minds, still them to receive your word, to understand the mystery of the epiphany and the impact it can have on each of our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This time last week, I was sat in the warmth of a living room in Poulton the Files, sharing in the worship, and I enjoyed Sam's leading and Rana's message and the prayers that were offered. I did have a cup of coffee, so I know exactly what you're doing out there now, and I was fully dressed. I didn't have a top on and just no my pyjamas on. I was fully dressed, but nonetheless, it allowed me for once to be able to be where you are. And whilst it's not the same as being in church, it does gather us in a virtual way. And for that, we're thankful. So to our reading, to this passage from Matthew, that this story that only appears in Matthew. And you know, it's such a well-known part of the Christi Christmas story. But over time, I've got to say, it has been embellished a little bit. There are some inaccuracies in some of the readings. Inaccuracies in scripture, both the names and the profession of the three magi. They weren't kings. They were astrologers who knew the solar system well. But that Carol... We Three Kings of Orient are, is part of the embellishment. It's, it seems to fit better. You can't say, we three astrologers of, it doesn't quite rhyme, does it, really? So there are inaccuracies. However, however, inaccurate embellished it may be, it is a crucial part of the story, of the revelation of God's plan. It's a story that the prophet Isaiah spoke of, in chapter 60, and I'm going to read portions of that now. Remember, written thousands of years before, sorry, 700 years before Jesus came to earth. But these are the words of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. And then it goes on. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. So 700 years before Jesus came to earth, Isaiah was revealing God's plan. And so it was manifest in that story that we've just had. And what strikes me in this passage that Richard read is the three very different responses to Jesus. So let's just have a quick look at them. The first response we see is that of King Herod, a response of anger and rejection. Now, Herod had reigned in Palestine for nearly 40 years, and he wasn't called Herod the Great for nothing. He was the only ruler in Palestine who had managed to keep peace and stability in that region. He was a brilliant architect and builder, a man of great vision. And not only that, he could be generous as well. But there was a really, really deep flaw in his character. He could be very suspicious and couldn't tolerate others rivaling his power and he was paranoid about people plotting against him. He murdered his wife and mother-in-law. He assassinated three of his sons, and anyone who tried to get close to claiming power from him were dealt with in an unceremonious way. So when these three visitors came from the east, they arrived looking for the king of the Jews, we can just imagine his reaction. 
There's only one king of the Jews, he would say. No one is taking that title from Herod. So in his anger and his paranoia, he decides to get rid of all the babies aged two and younger in the area of Bethlehem. The very thought of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, made him angry. He rejected any notion that another person could have power and dominion over him. And it is not so unusual for the mention of the name Jesus to make people angry today. And often there's hostility and there's anger, which could stem perhaps from a bad experience of church or so-called Christians in the past, which then gets projected onto their view of Jesus. And you know, for us too, for me too, Maybe there have been occasions in our own lives when we have felt so angry at Jesus. Perhaps when events in our lives have taken a turn for the worst, or someone we love has come seriously ill or died. And then the pain in our lives has been so intense that we doubted the existence and our experience of God. And perhaps... We've rejected the very idea of faith in him. So like King Herod, one response to Jesus is to feel angry and reject him. Reject the claim of his lordship that makes him over our lives forever. And then the second response to Jesus is that of the chief priests and the teachers of the law. And their response is one of apathy and non-committal. King Herod goes to these learned pillars of Jewish society and says, where will the Messiah be born? And they know the answer. They studied the scriptures. They've asked the questions. They would have read Isaiah. They would have known all about it. And it's all there in the heads. The Messiah will be born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea. And they can even quote the verse to the king which backs up their theory, that verse from Micah chapter 5. But, you know, that's what's so sad. Because to them, it's all theory. What would you expect from these great religious leaders? You would expect them the next verse to read of them hurrying off to Bethlehem themselves to greet the Messiah that they had been waiting for. But no, no, nothing of the sort. They give Herod the answer he needs and then they get back on with their own lives. Untroubled and unconcerned with the news they've received, they're not prepared to make a commitment, to make a commitment to the Saviour. And there are those folk today who know the facts about Jesus very, very well in their heads, but they don't recognise him as king in their hearts. Apathy and being unprepared to make a commitment to God is a very real spiritual malaise. But you know, at the beginning of this new year, 2021, perhaps it's a good opportunity for us to look back and reflect on that which has gone before and look forward to how we can perhaps become more committed and passionate in faith for the future. And that's a huge leap, isn't it, at this present time? But maybe, just maybe, Herod rejected Jesus. The teachers of the law remained apathetic about Jesus. But there is a third way, which is the way of the visitors from the East. And that way is to accept Jesus and to worship God as a result. This is quite an intriguing story for me, and it's only recorded in Matthew's Gospel. But it seems to me that this is a beautiful parable of the journey of faith that we all go through as we move into a deeper experience of God as Christians. The story of the visitors from the East is a four-stage journey from head to heart. And it's a pretty quick journey, so don't worry about four things. I'm not going to go on too long. First, they study the facts. 
Their journey of faith begins with them asking questions. They are astrologers. They study the stars. And when they see a strange star in the sky, they ask themselves a question about it. And second, they know that the only way to get an answer is to set out on the journey. They are astrologers. But they know that that journey involves risk. They have come to the court of the king and risked their lives to find out about Jesus. But, but their desire for truth is stronger than their fear. And then third, they come into the presence of Jesus and they worship. If I just do that. I'm not going to put them in there until Wednesday because Wednesday is the epiphany. But there they are. They're on the verge of worshipping Jesus. As part of the worship, they offer him gifts. For theirs is a sacrificial worship that is prepared to give as well as to receive. And then fourthly and finally, they make their way back home, back to their everyday lives, not leaving Jesus behind, but taking the experience and the encounter with them. And there's that lovely ver touch in verse 12, which says, they went back by another road, inspired by God in a dream. And isn't that possibly true for some of us that once we do meet with Christ, once we meet with Jesus, once we meet with the babe in the manger, we do take another road because life ought not to be the same again. And it's true too, that it is under the guidance of God that our route is chosen for us. It was God who said to the Magi, don't go that way, that's trouble, go that way. They had met with the Christ child, their lives were changed, they were in communication with God and they took his lead. So in the response of the Eastern visitors to Jesus, we see our very own journey of faith, starting with questions in mind. And you may still all have questions and why not? It's healthy to challenge and to question our faith. Setting out on a journey, which will inevitably involve risk and vulnerability. Because if we do take that road, then our relationships may change and there's a risk and we feel vulnerable. But it's a journey that leads us to the Christ child where we give him all that we have to offer. And then God sends us out, inspiring us and guiding us on the way to go. A new journey with the experience of Christ in our hearts. The way of worship and adoration. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the child, the way God chooses for us. Each one of us is confronted with the Christ child this morning and we need to make a response. That response may be for the first time or it may be a renewal of a response. Will we be like King Herod and reject Jesus? Will we be like the chief priest and teacher of the law and remain lost in apathy? Or will we be like the visitors from the East and step out on a journey of faith? Or get in the journey of faith machine again and set off with a renewed desire? It is, dear friends, a difficult journey, not without questions and not without doubts not without personal difficulties, not without sacrificial actions, but it is a journey that leads to Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Saviour. A journey that takes us on a new road, a new direction under Jesus Christ. A direction under God's guidance and within his grace and love, and compassion so 
start the engine, fasten your seat belts, and start the journey of 2021. And may it lead us continually to the Christ child, so that he may dwell in our hearts forever. Amen. A good start is to remind ourselves of our faith in God. What do we believe? And in your order of service, there's a slightly changed variant of the words we've used in the past. But if you want to still use the old words, that's fine. But the affirmation of faith. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God, his Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so to our offertory, reflection and prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we are reminded in this story of the Magi, of Herod, of the chief scribes and Pharisees, of how we can respond to your great goodness for that indescribable gift of your Son, our Saviour. And so we pray for hearts strengthened to continue to give of ourselves in whatever way we can. May it be Christ-centered. May it be holy, sacrificial, and yet productive. Generous God, we thank you for your gift. And as we offer ourselves and all that we have, we do so in humility, in fear perhaps, yet in the absolute knowledge of your faithfulness and your love with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. I want to ask Sam to change her hat from Zoom Meister to intercessor. Okay. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose glory the heavens are telling, we pray that as you led the wise men by the light of the star to your infant son, to worship in him the word made flesh, so by the light of the gospel, you will guide the nations of the earth into the way of truth, that the whole world may be filled with your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, our Father, as you reveal yourself to us through your Son, our Saviour Jesus, we pray for an end to coronavirus. We pray for all the NHS staff caring for those who are ill or in need of treatment, whether for COVID-19 or some other disease or other physical or mental condition. We pray for all frontline workers, for our police forces, supermarket workers, refuse collectors, all who care for our elderly or infirm relatives. We pray for our teachers as schools prepare to reopen, and we pray for scientists across the world. We pray for the families who have not been able to be with each other this Christmas, and for those who continue to be separated by the ongoing government restrictions. We pray for those who are grieving. Father, we ask that you protect them, that they know your love and your strength. And we praise you, O oh God, that the light of Christ shines amid the darkness of our world 
and that the darkness has not and will not overcome it. We pray that his light may shine more and more into our own lives, illuminating our minds with the knowledge of the truth and enabling us to walk in the way of holiness and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the wise men searched and found a child in a stable and knew him to be the greatest king of all, we pray, Lord, for those in whose hands are the destinies of the nations. We pray for all who exercise the power of government over the peoples. Make them defenders of liberty and champions of justice. And so rule in their hearts that they may also be lovers and makers of peace through him who is the Prince of Peace, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, Lord, we pray for our rector, David, his family, our bishops, Julian, Jill and Philip, for our archdeacons, Mark and David, and for all the clergy and lay leaders across this diocese. May you, the good shepherd, give them the ability to lead gently, to teach wisely, and to bring their people to the strength of spirit and holiness of life. Pour into their hearts a true love for the people committed to their care, and so guide and govern them by the Holy Spirit, that all they do may be for the welfare of your church, the extension of your kingdom, and to the praise and glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our confirmation candidates as they continue their faith journey, learning who you are, Lord, and developing their relationship with you, as you reveal your true nature through Jesus Christ, both fully human and fully divine. May they know the joy and security you bring to all of our lives. May they rest and trust in you, Lord. And may they recommit to following your teaching, your example, and experience the forgiveness and freedom that your sacrifice and death on the cross secured for us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, as we remember at this time the story of the wise men and the gifts they brought to the infant king, we pray that we, in our turn, may offer him the gold of obedience, the incense of lowliness, and the mare of devotion, and all for his honour and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In a few moments, we're going to listen to that carol that I referred to at the beginning of my reflection uh, that hasn't got three kings, but three astrologers, but we're going to sing it to th we three kings in a moment. We sent out a quiz very conscious that sometimes we, not deliberately, but sometimes we might overlook the young folk of the congregation in these times of different ways of worship. So this quiz is a little bit of a, an opportunity to try and engage with them. But if you're like me, uh, you, you do a quiz anyway, even if you're an adult. So the, some of the questions asked in the quiz, the answers appear in the words of the hymn and the carol, um, but also on the words that are printed on your um, on the sheets. So you need to look out particularly for one about who wrote uh, this carol. Uh, that appears on the hymn, hymn sheet, but I don't want to give you too many clues in case it's too easy of a quiz. So Stephen, press the button and let's listen to We Three Kings of Orient Art. Thank you. 
sneaked an extra verse in that version. Well, there's the joy of uh, the way we're doing it at the moment. On our service sheets, we now have words of praise and thanksgiving, an opportunity just for us to, in word and heart, give praise and thanks to God. The word of life, which was from the beginning, we proclaim to you. The darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The word of life, which was from the beginning. That which we heard, which we saw with our eyes and touched with our hands, we proclaim to you. For our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of life, which was from the beginning, we proclaim to you. Let's in heart and mind and through the virtual screen offer one another God's peace. Christ came and proclaimed the gospel. Peace to those who are far off and peace to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And you may offer one another God's peace with a wave or a blow a kiss or a cuddle or something like that. <laughs> splendid, splendid. Before we draw the service to a close, just I'm going to do the notices at this stage and just reiterate a few obvious things that have uh, already been said. Confirmation does start tomorrow. We're doing it via Zoom. We have about a dozen uh, young folk or thereabouts. Uh, and I put out the invitation to adults as well who may wish to be confirmed. And those, if you're kind enough to offer yourselves for confirmation, I will make sure that it is tailored and nurtured to suit yourself, your lifestyle, your your diary and all of those things. But I don't want any adult to miss out on the opportunity uh, of confirmation. Um, you should have the schedule of services that Sue sent out earlier this week. If you haven't received one, please send me an email and we'll make sure it gets to you. The January Voice is due to be published in the next 24 hours. I'm just looking to Cherry to see if she's received it. Yes, she's received it, so it'll be on its way to you. Thank you, Cherry. <laughs> and you know, we've already had in our prayers and in our other parts of the liturgy to remember and respect anyone who might be struggling in these times. And we don't say it out of, I don't know, duty. We say it out of heart that there are people, and we struggle in many and varied ways in this. The weather will bring another um, challenge to us. Uh, this coming week when schools return, um, you know, and please hold in your prayers our teachers, all the staff and the pupils as they do return to school. Um, it's going to be a, a, a time of real challenge, but we face challenges in different ways. And I would just want you to be assured that if you are struggling or you know of someone who's struggling, please let me know. We have a team that can, um, in the right way, respond to those needs, and as we already have done in the past. But please, if you know of anyone or if you yourselves need a help, well, that help might be a phone call. It might be just a chat. It might be something that you're concerned about. Well, we're here and we always will be here to share that and at least journey with you in these times of difficulty. I think the notices on the printed sheet speak for themselves, so I don't want to go through those. Um, there's quite a bit of news and thoughts in the January voice which I'm grateful to Alison yet again for producing at pretty short notice, uh, but she's done a remarkable job yet again. So, we gather again 
on Zoom Wednesday at 6.30. Uh, we're going to continue the thought of Epiphany and we'll develop and build on what has been shared this morning. So look forward to sharing with that. And I really, really do hope and pray that we can gather as a parish family next Sunday. Uh, that will depend on the situation, on advice from the diocese, but be assured that the intent is that we are able to gather in some way, shape or form. So let's move to our closing prayer, which we can share together. Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. One of the features of Epiphany is the light, the light of Christ, the star of Bethlehem, um, and all those other light-driven concepts. So as our closing hymn, before the blessing, we're going to have, uh, Lord, the light of your love is shining, shine, Jesus, shine, and sing along with it if you wish.
So we seek God's blessing. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in us the image of his glory and gladden our hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day, throughout this epiphany season, and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Good morning. God bless. Keep safe and see you soon. Thank you. You can now be unmuted and you can chat away with each other if you wish. Thank you.